Uh, in this tutorial, I will give an overview of arrays in LabVIEW. So arrays is uh, very useful and, uh, and in LabVIEW it has a very powerful features for using and um, programming with arrays in the LabVIEW programming environment. So here you see the front panel. If you right click here and go to the controls palette and select data containers, here you have different uh, opportunities for inserting an array on the front panel so here you have an empty array you just put it on your front panel and then you can drag different types of elements into this array it could be numeric boolean string etc here you have a predefined array with numeric here you have a predefined array with strings etc but typically you use this one an empty array and then you just drag in the type of uh, control that you want to create an array of. So here you see uh, some examples. This is a one-dimensional array with uh, numerics. This is a two-dimensional array with numerics. I will show you later how you create those uh, different types of arrays uh, in the LabVIEW programming environment. Here you also see different uh, types of arrays. Here you have an array with numeric. Here have an array with uh, boolean values. Here you have an array with different types of strings. And also uh, the different built-in functions that you have used in LabVIEW, typically on Scalars, also uh, supports arrays. So here you have two arrays, uh, array1 and array2, and assuming you want to sum each element in the array, like this, so that 10 plus 10 is 20, 12 plus 12 is 24, etc. Then you just use the summation function uh, and then you wire an array to the inputs. It automatically understands that the inputs are array and then also it creates an array on the output. The same here. Here we have two uh, uh, arrays, array 1 and array 2. And then uh, let's, in this case, I want to compare each element. So if 10 is equals to 10, then it's true. If 12 equals to 2, and no, then it's false, etc. And then here you have the equal built-in equal function, and you just wire arrays to the input. It understands automatically that it deals with array instead of ordinary scalar uh, numbers. There are also lots of other uh, built-in functions in LabVIEW that uh, deals with uh, arrays as an input or an output. For instance, here under mathematics, here you have lots of functions that works with uh, arrays. For instance, this under uh, this submenu here, I have an array with numbers. I want to find the mean and the standard deviation. Then LabVIEW has already built-in functions for that. Then you just wire the I array to the input, and then the mean function calculates the mean of these values, and then the standard deviation and variance variance uh, function calculates the standard deviation etc. So there are lots of functions that you can use in combination with arrays. Here you see different examples how you can use arrays in combination with for loops. Assuming this basic example you have an array with numbers and then you can just assuming you have a for loop then you can just wire the array directly to the border of the for loop and then inside the for loop you have so-called auto-indexing, so this means if you run this inside the for loop and then we put on a timer here, this value will first show 5, then 2, then 6, then 8, then 3, etc. Or in this other case, here I have used a random uh, generator simulating a value, assuming a temperature value between 20 and 30 and then I just wire the output to the border on the right side of the for loop and then an array is created automatically and then here I have set this for loop to go uh, or run 10 times then automatically an array with 10 different values generated by this random generator will be created. So this is a good example how the arrays are built in to the different features of the LabVIEW programming environment like for loops, while loops, etc. 
There are also lots of different uh, array functions that you can use in order to manipulate arrays in the lab view. So here in the array uh, palette, you have different uh, functions that you can use. Some of them are mo more used than others. Here are some of the most used functions like this array size. Typically you want to find as the size of an array. Uh, you typically want to insert a new element into an existing array. You want, may want to sort an array. You need to typically need to find a specific element in a specific array. And then you just wire the array and the specific index, and then this specific element will be uh, here on the output. Typically, use the build array to build an array uh, with different uh, uh, numeric um, inputs as an uh, as an input to the array, and then the output will be an array of these numeric uh, scalars. Or you may want to find the maximum value in an array or a minimum value. You may want to transpose a two-dimensional array, uh, then you use this one. You may also need this array constant, which you find here uh, in the array palette here, array constant, and you just drag it, drag it to the block diagram and then you find you can put in any kind of data type, a numeric, string, boolean, etc. So all these functions are functions that you need to uh, use in your lab program when you deal with arrays. So now let's uh, go to the lab programming environment to create some basic uh, lab examples. So now I have opened my lab programming environment here I have the front panel where I create my graphical user interface and here I have the block diagram where I create my code. So let's start with the front panel, just right click then select data containers and then you have these different options. Uh, this one is an empty array so you just put it on your front panel and then you see an empty array has been created with nothing inside and assuming you want to create an array of numeric then you just select numeric and just put it inside this one and then you can drag here and then you see you have created an array of numeric and then you can just start entering some values like this and whatever so now you have created an array with one two three four elements then you can just drag here to just show the elements uh, like this or you can choose to show only one and then you use this index to show this is the, fir the first or the index number zero and then this is index number one two three and this index number four is empty so there are different ways to to show uh, the array on your front panel i can also hide this one if that is relevant i can just right click visible items and then index display then this one will be removed uh, like this i can also put other da data types inside this array so then i just delete this one so now i have an empty array assuming i want to create an array of uh, boolean then i just put in a boolean like this so now i have created an array with so uh, with boolean values so then this is true false so the white one is false and the blue one in this case are true i can create other types of data types like string like this and then i can uh, enter some text like this and also i can choose so now this is an array of um, numeric controls where the user can change the value like this from the front panel but you can also have an array of numeric indicators so then you just right click here or you can create it from scratch select a numeric indicator instead like this so now this is read only the user cannot change the values but you change the values from your code you can also easily change between 
uh, controls. So now the user can enter values or indicators where you only are able to see the values inside the array. So all these are examples of arrays of uh, one dimension. So let's create a two dimensional array. Then you just select this um, empty array. Assuming I want to create a two dimensional array of numeric, then I just put in the numeric and then just drag it, not only uh, like this, but I can also drag it uh, different ways. The same I can do here. If I just make one index more, then you see I have created a two dimensional array or a matrix if you prefer. So then I can enter values here. So this is um, this is columns and this is rows. So then you can create any type of array, either one dimensional or two dimensional array or even three dimensional, four dimensional, etc. But typically you either use one dimensional or two dimensional arrays like this. So let's see how we can use some of the built in functions on arrays. So assuming you have two numbers like this and then you just use the built in uh, add function like this and then you, when you wire it uh, it automatically understand that the inputs are scalar and then you, when you right click here create indicator also the result will be a scalar so then assuming you put five here and six here and then when you run it the result will be 11 but these built-in functions can also work on arrays so if i just delete those instead instead create two types of arrays uh, like this so i create a numeric array um, with some values 5, 7, 7, 8, etc. And I can create one, another one, or I can just copy this one. So now I have two arrays. I can change some values here 3, 2, 4. And then I want to add each element. So I want to add 5 plus 3, which should be 8, 7 plus should be 9 etc so then I just wire those arrays directly to the same add function but now LabVIEW understands automatically that the inputs are arrays instead of scalar values so then I, when I right click here on output create indicator a new array will be created automatically so then when I run it now you see 5 plus 3 will be 8, 7 plus 2 will be 9, 8 plus 4 will be 12, etc. So these are how you can use the built-in functions on arrays instead of ordinary scalar values. I can replace it uh, with, um, with the multiplication instead, like this, and then no 5 times 3 will be 15. 7 times 2 will be 14, etc. So this is how you automatically can use the built-in functions on any kind of uh, data types like this. I can also use, uh, if I just remove this part, assuming I want to compare each element, I want to check if, if 5 equals to 3, etc. So I just put 7 here. So then I use um, this, sorry, uh, here on the comparison, um, equal, so then I just wire those two arrays and then on the output here I just right click, create an indicator and then you see that automatically we generate an array of booleans like this and then when I run it. 5 is not equal to 3, so this becomes false. 7 equals to 7, so this becomes true. 8 is not equal to 4, so then this becomes false. So basically, all most of the built-in functions can be used on arrays as well. And in addition, you have lots of um, 
built-in functions that are tailor-made for dealing with the arrays. So assuming you have an array with some numbers, 5, 7, 8, 9, 2, etc. And then I want to find the average value on these numbers. Then I just go here on the block diagram. And then, here of course, you have lots of functions here, but I will choose the mathematics, this one, and this, just use this mean function. And then I wire it directly here. And on the output mean, I can just right click, create indicator, and then when I run it, this will be the mean value of these uh, values like this. I can also instead of uh, right click here on the on the output, I can of course also create a numeric indicator here and type uh, mean like this and wire it directly to the output like this and run it and then you get the mean value on for these uh, array elements like this. So this is one of, uh, one of the built-in functions that deals with arrays. You have mean, of course you have hundreds of different functions that you can use. You have this uh, standard deviation that works in the same manner. You just wire the array on the input and then you get the results you want on the output. So basically we have lots of uh, built-in and powerful features for dealing with arrays, especially uh, the combination of arrays and for loops are very powerful. So let's go through a basic example. I have an array uh, with numbers. Then I can create a for loop here under programming structures and for loop. So this is a for loop and also right click here on the border to select the uh, label so you understand that this is a for loop and then I can wire this array directly to the border of the um, for loop uh, like this and assuming now I want to iterate through the for loop and first I want to find the first element, the second element, the third element etc and then present it here on the screen so then I just select a numeric indicator and just type value and then I can wire this directly like this. And then, and you see here on the border, then this array as an input here. So here you have an array, you see this tick line, and then here you have the, this thinner line. So this is an array, this is just one scalar, and then it goes through automatically through all elements in the array. So let's just run it. I will also put in a timer just to see, so you can see uh, the different values are changing. So I just use this wait function, create a timer of 2000 milliseconds or two seconds. So you can see the changing when I run through the for loop like this. <coughs> so let's run it now. So first it shows 5, then it shows 7, then it shows 8, then it shows 9, then it shows 2, and when the array is finished, it goes outside the for loop and the program stops. If I add more elements, of course, it will also handle all these values. So then first 5, 7, 8, 9, etc. like this. So um, the for loop deals automatically with arrays like this. You can just wire the array to the input here on the border and then you will get one element in each iteration like this using this for loop. So then this means that the combination with for loops and arrays are very powerful in LabVIEW. Here I will show another <coughs> example. I just remove all the existing code. So assuming now I want to create an array of random data, assuming I want to create some uh, simulated temperature data or something, then I can use the built-in uh, random generator. This one. Show the 
label. So this is the random generator. And then you can show, uh, select an upper bound. It could go from, so this is the upper, upper bound. Assuming I want to simulate a temperature value between 20 and 30, like this. Well, uh, I can also, since it's a temperature value, I can also change the data type to a double. So then the upper bound is 30. And the lower bound will be 20, like this. And then on the output here, there will be a random number between 20 and 30. And in this case, it could simulate a temperature sensor. Then I can uh, directly link this or wire this to the output border here on the for loop like this and then i can specify how many numbers i want to create and then i do that by just wiring a numeric constant here on the for loop so assuming i want to create 10 different temperature values uh, like this then here on the border i can just right click create an indicator and then you see an array has been created automatically, like this. And when I run it now, I will create an array with one, two, three, four, five, six, ten different elements. And each element are different, generated by this random generator, a number between 20 and 30, like this. I can also specify number of decimals, right click, select display format, select digit of precision, um, in our case, it's a temperature sensor, one digits, it's enough, like this. And then this means that using uh, the for loop in combination with different types of arrays, then you have a, a very powerful um, functionality for creating any type of uh, applications. So in the, this example, I guess we have used the built-in features that is part of LabVIEW that automatically uh, create an array like this using the for loop, but I can also use um, some of the array functions that are part of LabVIEW. So let's try to use some of those functions as well. So then instead of this example, I will um, modify it a bit and then I will use uh, one of these array functions called build array. This is probably the mon one of the most used array functions in LabVIEW. It's very powerful and you can use it in many different uh, ways. So now in combination uh, with this build array, I will also use another feature for this for loop. I right click on the left border, select add shift register like this. And then I want to initialize this with a data type. So then I just right click and select the same array palette, go to array constant, select this one. And then I select just a double numeric, put it into the array constant. And then I have created an array constant, which I can wire directly to this um, to this um, uh, shift register here. So now, now I have initialized the shift register and this should be of data type, uh, an array of numeric like this. So now I can use this build array functions to build an array in each iteration. So now the first value is an empty array like this and the next value it be the simulated temperature value that is generated by this random number generator. And then the output here, I wire it to the right border of this um, shift register like this. And then I wire it to the same array I had here on the output. So basically now I have made the same program, but I have made some of the, or used some of the array functions that I find here. I will use this build array function. So now I just run it and then you see I generate an array with t 10, 10 different uh, numbers. I can change it to, to 5, run it once more, then 
I generate an array with five different numbers, etc. So now I will use this build array function, which is very powerful. Um, typically, you need to use that in many different uh, ways in your LabVIEW applications. So let's test out some of the other array functions as well. So then I just create a new VI here in um, my LabVIEW programming environment. Here I have a blank front panel and then I have the block diagram here. So then assuming we start creating an array of numeric like this, we can have some values. 30, 25, 12, 17, 18, etc. So then uh, in the previous example, uh, one of the previous examples, I was just showing uh, the current value or the current index here in this um, uh, numeric indicator. And then I was using this for loop like this. I was just wiring the array to the for loop and then put this one directly to this numeric indicator and then when I in addition just put in a timer so we can see uh, that the value are changing in each iteration so this is the same example I created earlier like this So now it shows 30, 25, 12, 17, and 18, and then the program stops. Now here I have used the built-in features that is part of the for loop. So let's use some of these array functions instead to do the same. So I have the same array, I have this I have for loop, I have this timer, and I have this numeric indicator. So let's use some of the built-in functions that we have here on array. Let's start with this array size. So then we can use the array size to figure out how many elements that are part of this um, array so then this size here will be one two three four five and then i can wire this output directly to the n on the for loop like this this means that the for loop will run in one two three four five iterations and then i can wire this one to the border as i did in the previous example but now i just right click on this small icon i select disable indexing so now there will be no aut automatic indexing of this array and in addition i can use one of the other most used array functions index array and then i wire this one to the input so now we have the whole array here as an input, namely this array. And then I can use this small i icon, which is the index in the for loop. And then wire it like this. I can move it. I can improve my code, make it neater. Then the output here, I can wire it to this one remove it like this bit remove and then change the border on the for loop and on the window like this and let's now run it and now the functionality should be the same but now I have used some of the array functions namely the array size and the index array like this and then show first it sh shows 30 then 25 then 12, 17, and finally 18. So there are different ways to make or create the same functionality in uh, LabVIEW depending on your needs in your LabVIEW application. So
So basically, it's easy to create different types of arrays in uh, LabVIEW on your front panel, and um, in uh, LabVIEW on the pr uh, block diagram, you have lots of functionality to manipulate uh, the arrays, and you have also uh, loops like for loop, by loops that automatically handles arrays as an input or an output. You have also these um, built-in functions for mathematics, etc., that you can use when you deal with array in your LabVIEW applications. So thank you and goodbye.